Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jerry D. Wolf. I'll be your host this evening. We'll be talking about the greatest rivalries from WWE and WCW. Later on, we'll do a podcast on Mid South Wrestling. <clears throat> I hope you'll tune in for that. There may be a, a third podcast this evening because I'm in the mood for making content. So I hope you'll follow along. So let's start off with the best rivalries in WWE history. Now, I've come up with a list of literally 100 rivalries that were either significant in my lifetime or significant rivalries that my stepdad passed down to me and said, you know, if you ever wanted to go into the business, these are the ones you should pay attention to. These are the ones I grew up with. And there are wrestling clinics you know, from the bell to the end of the match. And uh, so I always paid attention to what he had to say about, about wrestling because he was an amateur wrestler and he grew up a wrestling fan. So uh, I like to honor him a little bit in um, my podcast and my content because um, without him, I wouldn't be a big wrestling fan. So here we go. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Vince McMahon. It was one of the biggest rivalries that the WWF uh, had seen up to the point where it was in the Attitude Era, around this 97 and 98. <clears throat> uh, seeing the uh, creator of WWE, well, not creator, but... Uh, the chairman, Vince McMahon, seeing the boss, but I meant seeing the boss uh, having a rivalry with an actual superstar, with an actual wrestler, uh, was really cool because it's like this guy is going up against the authority, you know, he's anti-authority, and he's constantly kicking Vince McMahon's ass. Uh, it was such an entertaining rivalry um, that went on literally for a few years until uh, Stone Cold went on to retire. But uh, I can't remember a more uh, profound uh, rivalry that actually elevated a star in, in the way that it did. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Bret Hart. Now, I, I may have to retract... What I say just a little bit, I'm not taking away from the man Austin rivalry, but Bret Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, the image of Stone Cold passing out in his own pool of blood and the way he was selling the sharpshooter with his reactions. He was such a great seller and he really made it look like he was in the immense amount of pain. He was just, I'm not tap out. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to submit. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go to sleep. <laughs> Jerry Lawler versus Bret Hart. Um, the match between them, uh, where one of them had to kiss the other's foot, the kiss my foot match. Uh, the image of, um, Bret Hart making Jerry Lawler put his own toes in his own mouth. It was not only disgusting, but funny as hell at the same time. As a kid, it was one of the more memorable matches uh, that I saw. Owen Hart versus Bret Hart. Um, I specifically remember just how well Owen Hart was at being a hill and uh, seeing Bret. He wasn't really struggling as a face. He, he was a really good face. I thought Owen was better at promos. And I thought he was more intense and fierce in the ring and fierce on the mic and more fierce competitor. Um, and uh, seeing that in Owen Hart, I thought he was the, the better two, of the two. The Owen Hart versus Bret Hart is such a memorable rivalry. There's a cage match uh, that stands out between them and then in the WrestleMania 10 match. Uh, also stands out. I'm going to switch gears here a little bit and go to something different. John Cena versus Umaga 
if you haven't seen the last man standing match between John Cena and Marga, I want to say it's at, at a Royal Rumble, but I could be wrong. Uh, one of the best uh, last man standing matches that you'll ever see. Uh, that rivalry um, had me on my toes. I was going for Imaga because I was tired of John Cena at that point. Um, Owen Hart versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Triple H. Uh, it was so intense, the, their rivalry. And uh, the, the, the incredible back and forth matches that they would have together. Um, they just showed how passionate they were um, for their craft because they were perfect in the ring together. They were always a, a fun match to watch anytime they were in the ring. Owen Hart versus Ken Shamrock. Um, a match that stands out between them is the Lions Den match. So if you're ever on Peacock, Check out the Lions Den match between Ken Shamrock and Owen Hart. Um, Owen Hart really made Ken Shamrock look like a, look like a star. I mean, Ken Shamrock was already a star. He was already a legit badass from the UFC. But um, Ken Shamrock actually had a decent uh, lesson for him because he was also the uh, first NWA World Heavyweight Champion for um, total nonstop action wrestling. And uh, <clears throat> he was also inducted into TNA's uh, Wrestling Hall of Fame. So his, his wrestling career um, might not be as uh, prestigious as his uh, ultimate fighting days, his MMA days, but uh, he still had a decent uh, wrestling career. And his uh, rivalry with Owen Hart is one of, one of the best. Owen Hart versus Shawn Michaels. Now, they might not have the, the best rivalry, but it definitely stands out to me because it was just a lot of technical prowess. And um, it wasn't just Matt wrestling. Um, Owen Hart should be great in Matt wrestling. And um, Shawn Michaels can be when he wants to be. And uh, they're both so um, technically inclined in, in that ring and uh, are great with being psychology. And so anytime they were in the ring together, they were literally like almost mimicking each other's movements at, at some points in the match or mirroring uh, what the other might be doing. They're, an they're also answering with great uh, ferocity, especially like with counters, like back and forth counters, arm drag, arm drag. Uh, <clears throat> it was just a wrestling clinic. Anytime uh, Owen Hart and Shawn Michaels were in the ring together. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Owen Hart. Obviously an infamous uh, rivalry because it almost ended Stone Cold's career. Uh, Owen Hart um, had a pile driver on Stone Cold. And uh, it was almost paralyzed him. And we're, we're lucky we even got to see Stone Cold have such a great career. But it's definitely a rivalry that stands out. Ken Shamrock versus The Rock. Nobody knows how to sell the ankle lock submission better than The Rock. If you go back and watch some of their matches together, The Rock uh, at one point is busted open and in that ankle submission hold. <laughs> he just looks like he is in severe pain he is. He was ready to tap out. He was ready to give in Triple H versus Stone Cold. Now, they've been a tag team together as a two-man power trip, but all their matches together uh, was a lot of brawling uh, and also um, a lot of foreign objects are being used. Uh, they had a lot of uh, hardcore-type matches uh, I specifically remember, um, I believe it was the Three Stages of Hell match. And uh, I, I, there's not much more I can say uh, about their rivalry. Nothing really um, makes it one of the one of the most memorable rivalries. I, but I think it definitely would have to stand out among all the rivalries that WWE had showcased because 
which is seen now today, just doesn't compare to anything in the past whatsoever. Um, Triple H versus The Rock. Anytime they were in the ring together, they were great at selling the other's move. They got it, both of them can sell really well. But um, <clears throat> when we would see uh, the Nation of Domination and their rivalry with DX and uh, the parodies uh, that had took place was just um, really out there and would not be accepted in today's um, culture or society. Let's see here. Let's look back. Uh, Stone Cold versus The Rock. Many times they got in the ring together. Uh, it was perfect because both of them knew, knew each other so well. They had great entering chemistry. And when you see a movie, it has choreography. Thing. And I know how things are planned out. But it's almost like uh, Stone Cold and The Rock and then in the ring together. It's almost like they're putting, not in cinema, I'm not going to say cinema. Because a lot of people use that terminology. But it's almost like they're literally putting on uh, magic. I'll I'll just say that. They're literally just putting on a magic show. Because one wrestler is showing just how well he could sell and the other is showing how dominant he could be. Stone Cold was so dominant. And it was hard watching him struggle at some points because when The Rock was um, on on his game, he, he was taking it to Stone Cold. And there were times when you're thinking Stone Cold's not going, not going to win this match. Now The Rock, screw this. Rocky sucks. Die, Rocky die. You know, those were the things that everybody was saying back then. And, you know, I, I was one of them. Let's see here. Stone Cold versus The Undertaker. The image that stands out in my mind the most is when Stone Cold is on The Undertaker's cross. Like, that baffled me. I was like, whoa. Because as a Christian, um, I think about that. And it's like, huh, I wonder if I should be offended. But, you know, in the 90s, you weren't really offended by a whole lot. You didn't get offended by anybody unless they just said something to you and you don't know who they are. Then you had the right to be pissed off at them. Like, who the hell are you saying anything about me? Especially if it was about family. Um, here's Stone Cold versus The Undertaker. Um, Chris Benoit versus Kurt Angle. Um, two of the greatest technical wrestlers of all time. Um, anytime they were in the ring together, they put on a wrestling clinic. Uh, submission hold after submission hold. Cult. Chris Benoit, whatever you want. He was one of the greatest in the ring. And um, this was, it was suplex after suplex, though, too. So I, but I can understand when people that don't understand amateur wrestling or don't understand Greco Roman or understand Brock Lesnar's style, you know, all these suplexes. I'm bored with all these suplexes. I, I get it. But at the same time, when you're an old school fan and you just love the sport of wrestling in general, and you don't have to be sold on high spots or hardcore wrestling, and you're just literally focused on the, the technical aspects of wrestling. Of wrestling, um, Chris Benoit and Krangle fulfilled their goals in that, and they showed every uh, ounce of athleticism that they had. They gave everything, and they put their bodies and spirits in the line, and literally uh, Chris Benoit gave his soul to wrestling. It, it took it took everything away from me. Uh, see here, the next rivalry I'm just going to cover. Chris Benoit versus Triple H. Of course, we got uh, a triple threat out of that at uh, WrestleMania. And um, 
you know, we get to see him and Eddie Guerrero at the end hugging it out as both of them have won their respective championships for both Raw and SmackDown. And, uh, you know, anybody who's seen that will always remember Chris Benoit for that and try not to think about things that have happened to Dredger's life. And we'll touch more on that in some more podcasts. But let's just stick to um, wrestling for now. But Chris Benoit versus Triple H is one of the best. You see how, how great of a hill that uh, Triple H can be. Um, I don't think there's a much better hill than Triple H. Like, we don't come much better than him. I hated him. I During his run of evolution, and he's got that World Heavyweight Championship for a long time. Like, oh, my God. Somebody's got to take that freaking championship off this guy. He was really annoying. Like, he loved to hate the guy. Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon. Um, I can't remember a whole lot from their rivalry, but I remember just how competitive they were against each other. And I remember that how it culminated into the latter match at WrestleMania 10. And, uh, where they put their bodies in the line. And that's the first time, well, you know, I hadn't seen a ladder match. So uh, I was impressed. And I was probably uh, to WrestleMania 10. Got uh, 1994, I guess it is. I guess I could look it up. When was WrestleMania 10? 1994. Okay. So at this point, I'm uh, 11 years old, but I'm going on 12. Seeing that match impacted me for the rest of my life. So I think that's pretty significant enough to say it was one of the greatest rivalries of all time because uh, Razor Ramon became one of my all-time favorite uh, wrestlers. I got an autograph for Scott Hall, who was Razor Ramon. And... Uh, Getting to meet him was one of the greatest moments uh, of my life. And uh, I miss the dude. He, too bad that uh, he went so soon. <clears throat> uh, the next rivalry. Shawn Michaels versus Triple H. Man, and, and I know we had already touched on Chris Benoit versus Shawn Michaels and Triple H, but just Shawn Michaels and Triple H and Jerem, their own rivalry that they have with each other. Uh, for the, um, the tenure that it went on, it seemed like it went on for at least God, three or four years, maybe. At least, because Shawn Michaels came back in, what, 2001, 2002? 2002, I mean, he was probably at the uh, Survivor Series 2002, because that's when he wins the uh, the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, he was the first World Heavyweight Champion when they got back to the belt. Well, the entire time uh, they're going through the rivalry, uh, Shawn Michaels and Triple H being best friends, if they, you really can't tell. <laughs> you really can't. The the lines became really bl blurry for me. I was like, I can't tell it's real. Um, because <laughs> Triple H was just such an awesome bad guy that he just really made it look like Shawn Michaels was being put through hell. I mean, Shawn Michaels being in a pool of his own blood, you see blood all over his face. Uh, these, and Triple H makes such a friend with the sledgehammer and he uses it on Shawn Michaels repeating uh, throughout the rivalry over the years and it's just like how is Shawn Michaels not dead how has he not beat you know beat him within an inch of his life he's broken in hell God almighty is my witness he's got a family damn it <laughs> So, uh, Shawn Michaels uh, versus The Undertaker. And they've had a lot of different um, 
they've had a lot of different moments over the years, and uh, their first encounter that I can remember was the Hell in the Cell match, which was the debut game. And, uh, man, the match was a little disappointing, but their rivalry has been great. Um, I was expecting more out of that match, and uh, I was honestly a little let down. I was like, man, that was crap. And then Kane debuted and went, oh, man, what's this all about? Because they've been, had, had been talking about, you know, his character. And then now he's finally here. So even though I wasn't a big fan of that match at the time, uh, the rest of their encounters over the years uh, carried more weight for me, especially, um, I think the wind up for them in the Royal Rumble 2007, uh, with the both of them being the last two in the ring. And then their matches that they had uh, where Shawn Michaels' career was on the line uh, at WrestleMania. And they're, I can't remember a rivalry that lasted that long except for Ric Flair and Sting. And we'll get to that here in a little while. Shawn Michaels versus Vince McMahon. Uh, if you can remember the WrestleMania 2 rivalry that they had, it was uh, strange to say the least because Vince McMahon has uh, been worshipping himself and referring to McMahonism, which is just utter ridiculous nonsense. But um, it was nice to see Shawn Michaels take him and do the elbow drops through the, uh, through the table on Vince McMahon, uh, seeing that. That was satisfying. <laughs> like, enough with this bullshit. Razor Ramon versus Savio Vega. Um, the only reason I remember this being so memorable is because Savio Vega really needed to get over at the time, and Razor Ramon really helped him uh, elevate him to another level. Razor Ramon versus Bret Hart. Um, Kind of the same reason, uh, even though I really liked Razor Ramon, he really needed to get over, and Bret Hart really helped him, and you can see Razor Ramon's best coming out of Bret Hart. Bret Hart really helps him, I think, uh, with his in-ring work, even though Razor Ramon had already had <laughs> some years behind him in WCW. He was really showing his best against Bret Hart, in my opinion, and Bret Hart just brought, brought out some of his best qualities. Um, Razor Ramon versus Gold Dust. One of the most controversial um, storylines and rivalries in WWE's history. And I was not a fan of Gold Dust at the time. I was never a fan of Gold Dust, period, except for when he was with Booker T. And, and going through his electrocution wrestling mania you know little ridiculous gimmick he had but I thought it was so funny at the time so that was the only time I've ever been a gold dust fan but uh, if you ever get a chance to go watch uh, the rivalry on Peacock please do the Razor and Money Gold Dust might make you think differently about being a fan not necessarily in a bad light but maybe if you're not a fan it might make me a fan because uh, I I had friends that started watching uh, wrestling uh, because of this. And I remember telling uh, fans, uh, non fans that were friends of mine in school, saying, "Hey, this ma this match is really matches between these two are really bizarre. You should go watch this." And they'd come back to me and they'd be fans. They're still fans to this day because of that match. Um, Bret Hart versus Bob Backlund. Um, I did not like Bob Backlund. Uh, he was said, said so good at being a heel. I had never seen him, uh, as a face in the years that he was, um, a champion for the several years that he was champion, like Roman Reigns is in, uh, 1200 days or so, something like that, his champion now. And it's just a complete worthless, um, run as champion. It's just garbage. But Bob Backlund's run was more significant than Roman Reigns uh, 
bull crap uh, will ever do. So um, I'll give props to Bob Backlund because he was actually a fighting champion and defending his championship constantly. And when Bret Hart uh, was in a rivalry with him, that was when wrestling was at its best. Uh, Bob Backlund versus superstar Billy Graham. I don't know a whole lot about this rivalry, but it was one of the rivalries that my stepdad uh, had uh, told me, you know, this is what got me into this. Um, so I know it's one of the greatest uh, rivalries because it's, my stepdad said so. You know, I'm going to believe him because he was a huge wrestling fan. Bruno San Martino versus Ivan Kovac. Um, there's another rivalry that um, my stepdad imparted on me. Bruno San Martino versus Larry Zbysko. Uh, I actually um, w- watched their rivalry play out, and it, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, Larry Zbysko was actually really underrated. I think he was a, a great wrestler in his time. Bruno San Martino versus Gorilla Monsoon. Uh, this was another one of my stepdad's favorite rivalries. Uh, Rick Rude versus the Ultimate Warrior. I never liked the Ultimate Warrior, like ever. And um, I wasn't exactly a Rick Rude fan, but because of this rivalry, I became a Rick Rude fan because I did not, that's how much I did despise the Ultimate Warrior. Did not like him whatsoever. Um, Sergeant Slaughter versus Hulk Hogan. Uh, that's going to make one of my top 10 rivalries because um, I remember, you know, while I watched this live, uh, their rivalry play out. And then as I got older, I watched this VHS and I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee, living in Aunt Nikki. And uh, she's like, yeah, we'll go into town and bring a couple of movies and you can come back here and we'll. Uh, watch the movies and eat some popcorn. And she, she said, if you want to rent a wrestling movie, you go ahead. And she was just really cool. She was a sweet lady. Uh, God rest her soul. But um, if it hadn't been for her, I might not have seen um, WrestleMania 7 um, uh, as quickly as I did. But um, that's one of my favorite rivalries. Uh, and I remember that Sergeant Slaughter got a lot of death threats um, as he, in his time led up to going to WrestleMania 7, where it culminated in the whole Hogan won the championship for him. Like, because he was like, I'm going to say this wrong, Iraqi or Iran sympathizer. I, I don't, <laughs> don't give me flack for it, but, uh, he was just uh, supporting the, the wrong side and the whole Hogan, you know, obviously gave him what for. But it's one of my favorite rivalries, uh, ever. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter versus Ivan Putsky is another rivalry that my stepdad uh, told me about and said, you know, this, uh, this is something you want to watch. I, I don't think I've still watched, I still don't think I've watched it, but um, I, I'll, I'll get around to watching it someday. Sergeant Slaughter versus Superstar Billy Graham. Like I said, it's another um, rivalry. I, I need to focus more on another one my stepdad told me about. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter versus Greg the Hammer Valentine. And now, I actually got to see some of their matches, and some of them were actually kind of brutal. Um, they didn't play around. Greg the Hammer Valentine, uh, don't, don't let the name Valentine fool you, because he was no sweetheart in the ring. He would whoop your ass. I even remember he, him having a dog collar match with somebody, and it was pretty violent. Sergeant Slaughter versus Pedro Morales. That was another one of my stepdad's favorite rivalries. Um, I'm not a Pedro Morales fan. I, just don't, I didn't see his uh, appeal, but um, my stepdad obviously was a big Pedro Morales fan. So I should probably maybe pay attention to some of his matches more. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter versus the Iron Sheep. Um, I've been watching some of their rivalry recently. So I'm just now, um, catching on to this one, but it's actually decent so far and I really like it. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm 
in, into it, I think it'll pick up. Uh, the Undertaker versus Kurt Angle. Um, if you've seen any of their matches or moments together where they're in the ring, uh, it, it's just um, magic. It's just, they have great in ring chemistry together. Undertaker versus Mankind. Well, you get the Hell in the Cell match out of this that leaves everybody floored and their jaws on the floor. And, uh, Hardcore wrestling really took off from here, and wrestling hasn't been the same. I'm I'm saying this not just for me, but for somebody else, because he's such a um, big WCW fan, and uh, he told me that this is what changed wrestling for him. Um, and I have to agree, like, this is the Undertaker-Mankind rivalry that ends up in the uh, Hell in the Cell. That moment really changed wrestling. Like, that's saying the word wrestling uh, involved in that match just makes no freaking sense. Um, you know, because it, it had nothing to do with wrestling. It, it just became a big... Uh, Oh, what's the best way to put this? It became uh, a gimmick match. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, I think that's the way you say it anyway. Um, it just became part of the entertainment. It wasn't wrestling at this point. It was, what can we do to make people uh, go holy sh and, you know, just not be able to stop craving that and wanting more? We want more Hell in a Cell matches. We want more last man standing matches, uh, I quit matches. We want to see more blood, first blood matches, inferno matches, casket matches. You know, they have so many gimmick matches and, um, uh, the Undertaker Mankind rivalry. It may be one of the greatest rivalries ever, but at the same time, it kind of, uh, diminishes the value. Good, solid professional wrestling. It, uh, really puts a damper on um, technical wrestling. Real, you know, real solid, um, valuable wrestling. It uh, it puts a big shadow on that. And so for that reason, it's not going to make my top 10 right. The Undertaker versus Kane. Um, they've had so many matches over the years, it's a uh, little... <laughs> It's not exactly hard to keep up with, but it's one of the best rivalries that you're ever going to have because literally they told one of the best stories introducing Kane in the WWF. Uh, the Rock versus Mankind. Uh, Mankind took more chair shots to the head than I think any wrestler um, in their career. And in their matches they had together between The Rock and Mankind, uh, I'm pretty sure Mankind had multiple concussions. Like, there's no telling what The Rock did to his brain. Let's just pray that he doesn't have a an episode, you know, linked to his cognitive behaviors. The Undertaker versus Yoko Zuma. Um, I have this image in my mind of the Undertaker being shown on the Titan Tron, the image of him inside his casket. And they project it up there on the Titan Tron. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. How the hell did they do that? You know, um, at that point, I think as a fan, I was starting to get really fascinated with the, uh, the product production value. And, um, Yoko Zuna, um, he was great for a, a big guy. Uh, he could actually move around the ring for a big dude. And uh, seeing him trying to do uh, a Samoan job on The Undertaker, he did it so flawlessly. Um, just about on anybody, but when he uh, would uh, perform a Samoan job on The Undertaker, it's like he did, he did it with flow. He, he was just ready all the time. I'm ready to drop that small and drop. 
come at me. And uh, seeing how many people that had to come together for Yoko's in all the hills in WWF trying to put Undertaker in his casket was all that much more fun. I remember Crush being one of the guys helping Yoko Zen. Rest in peace. Crush was a, a hell of a wrestler. And um, I remember him as his, he'd gone by his real name, uh, Brian Adams, in WCW, uh, in the NWO. And uh, he, he, he was actually a lot of fun to watch. Mick Foley versus Randy Orton. When they had some barn burners, uh, man, they have some matches where they've got uh, barbed wire and just excessive blood and thumbtacks. When when they when they're in a match, you know that some shit's gonna happen. That's just that's mildly putting it. Uh, Randy Savage versus George the Animal Still. Now, as a kid, I'm watching this and I'm thinking, I really like George the Animal still because he's trying to protect Liz. Who Randy Savage is like neglecting and just, you know, get over here in the corner and just keep your mouth shut. Don't talk. You understand that? Yeah. And George the Animal still's not having any of that shit. And he's the guy that's biting into the damn turnbuckle and just pulling it apart, losing his mind. I always thought that was so cool watching him lose his mind, biting. Into a turnbuckle and ripping it to pieces. Uh, Randy Savage versus Hulk Hogan. Um, their rivalry is one of the best uh, rivalries ever. I can't get better than that. Uh, I'm sold on that. That will be definitely one of my top tens. I didn't actually make it top ten, but it will be at the end of this podcast. Randy Savage versus Ted DiBiase. Uh, anytime they were in the ring together, it, it was it just flowed. Blue like a river. It was poet. It was like poetic. Um, both of them are so uh, technically sound. Uh, Randy Savage versus Ultimate Warrior. Uh, even though uh, I can't stand the Ultimate Warrior, they have one of the best rivalries ever. That'll make my top ten for the sole reason that they actually brought real emotion into this and not. Um, from their perspective, but from the fans' perspective, they literally pulled you in, uh, especially with the way the the match was going at WrestleMania 7 between Savage and Warrior. You, you were hoping Randy Savage would win. And some fans, you can see some fans in the crowd, you know, biting their nails, their hands on their head. And uh, it's... As a fan, as a kid watching that, I mean, something got me teared up. I don't know what it was, but there was something about that rivalry that made me say, man, that was just awesome. I want to do that one day. That's And as, as a kid, it's hard not to think that. When you're a fan, as a kid watching wrestling, you're like, man, I want to do that one day. That would be so cool. Yeah, how can you not think that? Uh, Randy Savage versus Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, <laughs> even though I've always been afraid of snakes, I'm not afraid to see, you know, and see him at the zoo or see, if I see him out and about at the lake, I'm not going to make a scene. I've seen people make a scene and scream when they see the snake, and it's really embarrassing, especially when they're dudes. <laughs> I will not say their names uh, and say, and spare them the embarrassment, but they know who they are. Uh, but when Jake the Snake, uh, his when he had the cobra out and it bit uh, Randy Savage on the arm, you can't get over that. That's leaves a scar on. And you know the kids in the audience at that event had to be. Uh, not just scared, but thinking, holy crap, I don't want to be around a snake anymore. And I don't know if I want to see a Jake the Snake Roberts match anymore. He's dangerous. And not only was Jake the Snake Roberts snake dangerous, he had a dangerous dude. And he had a way with this word because he was soft. And he just went.
he was that good. He was good on the mic and he was good on the ring because he was just a great ring psychologist. He knew what he was doing. Every move that he was going to do, he knew he was going to do it before he did it. I'd say, flowed like wine. And then when Jake the Snake Roberts and his habits, yeah, Jake the Snake Roberts, his moves in the ring flowed like wine. Big Boss Man versus The Big Show. We really had some uncomfortable moments in this uh, because they used The Big Show's dad's passing um, in this angle. But, you know, that's probably what made it such a memorable, uh, and that's messed up. But at the same time, they made a Seems like they had a squash match out of that <laughs> at one at one point. But um, to me, as, as a kid, it was seeing that, it's like, that's so disrespectful. How could he do that? So because of that, that makes it one of the best rivalries for me. I'm not going to forget that. Al Snow versus the Big Boss Man. The image of the Big Boss Man feeding Al Snow his dog was horrifying. That's why it's memorable. Hulk Hogan versus the Big Boss Man. I can't really go into detail too much about it because I honestly don't remember that much about it. Uh, but I remember uh, being really lured into uh, Big Boss Man's character because he was a bad guy at the time. And um, I remember him going back and forth from face to hill all the time. It was so annoying. I liked the big boss man, but when he was facing Hulk Hogan, I didn't because I was a big Hulk Hogan. And uh, uh, Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, did I already go over this one? I mean, yeah. Maybe not. No, I guess not. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm not an Ultimate Warrior fan, so. Uh, it's really hard to really get into any of his rivalries, but because he's ended up passing the torch, uh, Hulk Hogan, sorry, because Hogan ended up passing the torch to him, it made me dislike him even more. Uh, and knowing how Ultimate Warrior was with Jake the Snake Roberts in real life, and seeing some of the things that have happened, like on Dark Side of the Ring, it's like it just makes me dislike this guy even more. Like Jim Hellwig must have had some real demons to hate people so much, to to really be that high on himself, to make himself think that he's that much better than everybody. Like that's absurd. Hulk Hogan versus King Kong Bundy. Uh, this uh, rivalry played into a WrestleMania that would be broadcast from, I think, three different cities. I don't remember all the cities, but I know one would have been Trump Plaza. They would have had another location, another location in Los Angeles. I don't know where else it would have been broadcast, but uh, the cage match between him and Hogan was pretty awesome. I really enjoyed it. Hulk Hogan versus Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff, they even had a great cage match. One of the best cage matches of all time. If you haven't seen it, I implore you, go watch it. Dino Bravo versus Ultimate Warrior. I wasn't even a fan of Dino Bravo or Ultimate Warrior, but this one intrigued me because Dino Bravo was a weight, um, like a weightlifter, like a bodybuilder. And for a short frame dude, he was really strong. Like this guy had brute strength. It was it, it was interesting seeing him in rivalry with Ultimate Warrior, uh, JBL versus Eddie Guerrero. Uh, they had a lot of uh, blood-soaked moments, and they put each other through hell. And the rivalry was honestly uh, kind of blatantly racist at some moments, which is not acceptable, but. Then again, you have Vince McMahon putting this together, so 
he's not uh heavy on anybody that's not white <laughs> what what else can i say uh jbl played into this so well because he's such a great guy. but having him at the border chasing away illegal immigrants was just absurd there was no need for all that it was already a, a great rivalry eddie guerrero versus kurt angle that's one of the best rivalries of all time probably one of my top 10. um uh, they're back and forth in the ring and in their in ring chemistry uh they flowed so well together and uh they were great friends too and it just showed because they knew what the other was going to do they were just they were ready for each other eddie guerrero versus rey mysterio uh this rivalry plays over from different uh promotions from wcw and i think they even had a a, a one night was it a one night stand match no, I think it was Eddie Guerrero or Chris Benoit. My bad. Um, but Rey Mysterio's uh, rivalry with Eddie Guerrero began in WCW. And uh, they even had uh, more moments where Dominic uh, Mysterio was um, part of the angle. And <laughs> got a little uncomfortable uh, in comfortable moments during that rivalry in WWE. Uh, with Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio with Dominic involved. Uh, Rey Mysterio versus The Big Show. Um, I really enjoyed that rivalry. Uh, seeing The Big Show take uh, Rey Mysterio on a stretcher just to put all five foot seven of Rey Mysterio or something like that. He's really short, but uh, seeing all five foot seven of Rey Mysterio being um, slammed into the, uh, the, the Turnbuckle post that uh, that ring post. That was a little disturbing. It was like, holy oh, crap! Ray's such a small guy, and Big Show's like seven foot two, four hundred pounds, and he just takes Ray Mysterio and slings him into that ring post on a stretcher, mind you. I was like, holy shit! Did that really happen? Ray Mysterio versus Chris Jericho. Uh, this always. This is also. Um, rivalry that transcends um, professional wrestling in general because it was a rivalry in WCW and WWE and uh, I don't think that there is a better two people to have a rivalry than Rey Mysterio and Chris Jericho other than Sting and Ric Flair because they, they're the there's a mecca in my opinion but Rey Mysterio and Chris Jericho uh, transcend the sport because they were able to carry a rivalry from one promotion into another. Um, CM Punk versus John Cena. Um, that's one of the biggest. It definitely makes my top 10. Because uh, seeing how CM Punk was so hell-bent on leaving WWE with the WWE Championship, possibly going to New Japan, Ring of Honor and defend it there. Uh, their um, 2001, not 2001, damn it, 2011 Money in the Bank uh, pay per view, which aired in Chicago. Um, that would have been where CM Punk was going to lead the WWE Championship. That's where he goes over the barricade and sends John Cena a kiss, blows him a kiss. It was weird. Uh, CM Punk versus The Big Show. That was just a fun rivalry for me to watch. Uh, it might not be one of the greatest um, 100 rivalries, but for me, it was it was entertaining, and I really enjoyed it. The CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy. Uh, here we go, uh, using alcoholism as a way to um, push a storyline. It's just weird. I didn't get it. I didn't care for it because it made Jeff Hardy look like he was a bad person. And it's not always a bad person that does drugs. Uh, from family experience, from my own experience, it's not always a bad person that's doing drugs. It's just somebody that's lost and he doesn't know uh, what to do with their life. Um, 
There's somebody that's uh, searching for meaning and can't find it. And the using um, Jeff Hardy's uh, alcoholism in this storyline, it really pissed me off. So I was really rooting for Jeff Hardy. It, it literally was a storyline that made me hate to see him part. Because literally, he he makes his dad's alcoholism his gimmick. He literally, he's literally a punk. He's literally being a punk. I'm going to use my dad's alcoholism as a gimmick. That's going to be my gimmick because I'm a little bitch-ass punk. There you go. There's my opinion of CM Punk. CM Punk versus Rey Mysterio. Um... I could have left this. I could have left this rivalry off. <laughs> I wouldn't have replaced it with CM Punk versus Ryback, though. Feed me more. Feed me more. No, feed you less. Feed you less. Less potato chips. And get off your ass. Off the off the couch with the potato chips. Um, CM Punk versus Rey Mysterio was entertaining. And uh, I don't know why I added it to this list. I could have definitely added something else. Um, I would rather Kane versus Matt Hardy be in this spot. I thought it was a ridiculous storyline, but it deserves to get recognized simply for the fact that both of them were more entertaining uh, than um, this rivalry. So, goodbye, CM Punk versus Rey Mysterio. Kane versus Jeff Hardy. I said Matt Hardy. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Uh, Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels. Um, man, that was just so. I, I can't really explain how intense that that was. Seeing Kurt Angle. Um, getting tossed out of the Royal Rumble and then coming back to run Shawn Michaels' spot. It was like, holy crap, this has really happened. And because he snapped, he, uh, he put the, uh, ankle lock on him right there in the entryway. Shawn, I, I, I remember correctly, Shawn Michaels was bleeding with the ankle lock on him. And they had a great WrestleMania match. It was one of the best WrestleMania matches of all time. That's why their rivalry is so good. Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels. Boy, if you saw Chris Jericho smash Shawn Michaels' um, face into his Jeritron, then you know what I'm talking about. And their match at WrestleMania, was it WrestleMania 19? Don't quote me on that. It could be wrong. I think that might have been. Ah, uh, the hell with it. I don't remember what pay per view it was, so don't quote me on what pay per view they were, uh, the rivalry led into, but I remember it being really intense and both of them just showing, uh, great acting. That's really what, uh, they, they might not be able to act in movies, but when it comes to, uh, telling each other, I'm going to kick your ass, both of them were really good at it, and both of them showed it in the ring. Uh, Kane versus X Pac. Um, I think this is the only time X Pac makes this list. But because, uh, I was so into that rivalry and just glued to the Monday Night Raw when I would see them, or even Sunday Night Heat, I'm pretty sure they had a Sunday Night Heat moment or match. Um, it was just, uh, really, um, I don't know. It must have had some kind of uh, profound effect on me because uh, it, it made me like it that well. Like seeing Kane pick up somebody so lightweight and just slam, choke slam in his ass uh, on, the, on the mat. It was just like, man, how, how can you put somebody that's 328 pounds up against somebody that's 210 pounds soaking wet and just toss them around like a potato sack like that? <laughs> So sometimes it didn't, some of the matches that WWE put on didn't make a whole lot of sense. But, you know, somebody that's pushing 400 pounds 
and somebody that's only half that, like you know, putting two of the maps together, might not make a lot of freaking sense. But uh, X Pac held his own, and um, because uh, X Pac was able to hold his own, they had a lot of uh, great back and forth moments. Um, and in the matches, you know, seeing the, some of the counters that X Pac put on. And when he was actually able to, um, to not the Bronco Buster, but his finishing was the X Factor. But he was actually able to, uh, capitalize on the X Factor with Kane. That was like, dang, he just put, did that on a seven foot, you know, a seven foot monster. Like, good lord. Kane versus Nick Cole. Um, I guess I was, let's see here. I guess I was including Mankind. Dude was and Cactus Jack all together. But uh, anytime Kane and Nick Foley had a match together, if it was Mankind, I probably meant Mankind in this situation uh, because I think they had more matches and moments together than um, Dude was and Cactus Jack. But Kane and Mankind, uh, they put each other through freaking hell. Um, they had a lot of hardcore matches, um, street fight types, and uh, I'm sure Kane gave um, Nick Foley a couple of concussions. There's no doubt about it. Um, Kane and the Big Show. They've been a tag team together and they won tag team championship gold together. But Kane against the Big Show, if you've ever seen the rivalry, it's really weird watching you try to choke some of each other. It's like Jesus. I, I didn't really, I didn't really care. They're trying to choke slam each other. I felt like they should have been doing something else, like maybe trying to make the other submit. Because watching them choke slam each other was just really bad. This doesn't look right. It looks like he's struggling. Neither one of them could sell it, and uh, it, was, it was just kind of pointless to try and. Um, choke slam Kane when you're the big show, or choke slam the big show when you're Kane. Because the both of them are so freaking big, it's ridiculous to try and have, uh, high expectations of that match. But because of them are so large and pulled off with so many, um, foreign objects on each other, because they were, um, they had a lot of hardcore moments where they were, not just testing each other's limits, but trying to make each other bleed. Because at one point, you know, Kane's got his mask off, and uh, you know, you can make Kane bleed when he's got his mask off. <clears throat> Rick Flair versus Randy Savage. Oh man, uh, their rivalry in um. WWF way back in the day when Ric Flair had uh, won the Royal Rumble. It was around that time. Uh, their moments had, with Ric Flair and Ring Savage going into their WrestleMania match. I want to say that's WrestleMania 8. I could be wrong. could be 9. Uh, I know uh, Sid and Hogan were um, another match on the card. But uh, Randy and Ric Flair, their rivalry, it wasn't just intense. It was um, probably uncomfortable for Randy Savage, I would imagine, because um, Ric Flair in this rivalry, you know, she, being shown in a photograph with uh, Miss Elizabeth, and they're both in swimming wear and looking at each other like with googly eyes and if you're Randy Savage and you're seeing that you're freaking pissed off because if you don't know anything about Randy Savage in real life he was actually jealous that was not just his character he was a very jealous and controlling guy and people um, in the business will tell you that if you're watching any of the interviews where people are talking about Randy he was really controlling, and he was um, a very overprotective guy. I, uh, 
I think he also didn't just see Miss Elizabeth as his girlfriend, but he was also like the protector. And um, his rivalry with uh, Ric Flair was really personal, and that's why it makes one of the greatest rivalries of all time. Uh, Ric Flair versus Shawn Michaels. Oh, I could have left this one off here, but I'll talk about it. Um, I know a lot of people are crazy about this, and it's, I think it's part of the reason why I added it on here, because a lot of people think it's one of the greatest rivalries of all time, and because it's ge general consensus of, pe of being a loved rivalry, I think that's the reason why I added it on here, because it's... Is generally accepted as one of the best rivalries, and um, I I don't think it is, but I put it on here because of that. Um, I think the ending of the Shawn Michaels Ric Flair match was absolutely yes. I could not actually. Oh, I didn't like it. It was just a, I'm sorry, I love you, uh, and then the super kick, and it's like oh god, that was cheesy. The cheesiest ending to a match. I didn't care for it. But I think I added that on here because um, people just generally really love that rivalry. And I mean, they did have some great moments uh, but uh, in, in that during that rivalry, but at the same time, I, I can't appreciate it as well as others can. Ric Flair versus Mick Foley. Um, that was also really personal because Ric Flair had called Mick Foley um, nothing but a glorified stuntman. And uh, so that's why it was so personal. And Mick, I guess, it had uh, something to prove to Rick. And um, they had, a street, I think, a street fight. And, uh, and when you see the barbed wire and the blood in that match, You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say it's one of the best rivalries because their their promos, the video packages, and um, the way the match flow went and how much they took from each other. It was just amazing. That's why it's one of the best rivalries out there. Uh, Randy Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I think that's a given. I think most people know that that's one of the best rivalries of all time. Uh, if you ever um, get a chance to watch it on Peacock, Randy Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, um, do watch it because it's, uh, if you're th ever thinking about being in the business, if you're ever thinking about, hey, I want to do this one day, then watch that match. Or you're depriving yourself of a great rivalry. Uh, Andre the Giant versus Hulk Hogan. Again, that, that's a given. Um, it's one of the greatest uh, build-ups. Uh, one of the greatest moments in wrestling history. Um, and one of the most popular um, moments in wrestling history. I'm 93,000 plus uh, have packed um, that stadium in Detroit to see them. Uh, Jake the Snake versus Andre the Giant. Man, that was a fun one for me because I love to see Andre the Giant getting scared shitless running out of the ring from that snake. He was so terrified for me. Andre the Giant versus Big John Stud. Uh, seemed like theirs, their rivalry might have been a little personal. Uh, I really enjoyed their rivalry. Andre the Giant versus Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Uh, Batista versus Triple H. Um, when you uh, get down to uh, the way um, match fundamentals and uh, the way you should conduct yourself on the mic and uh, around um, each other, kind of whether it's in, in the um, whether it's backstage or in the ring as a professional. Both these guys are constant professionals. And because of that, I think that's why they have such in -ring, great in-ring chemistry and great respect for each other and uh, why they just have such great flow in their match. Batista versus Undertaker. 
they have a lot of great moments together and some great matches, like some of the best. Um, Batista is a surefire Hall of Famer. Um, I hope he um, goes in this year. Uh, Rey Mysterio versus uh, Batista. It was, um, I, I wasn't kind of expecting it uh, where Batista turns ill and uh, goes after Ray and just beats the hell out of him. I was expecting it, and it was a great turn, too. Batista versus JBL. They had some really great moments together. I enjoyed those uh, back and the back and forth between them. The Rock versus Hulk Hogan. Um, going into uh, No Way Out and going into WrestleMania. Um, it, it was just... Uh, Something else. Uh, it seemed like it was no way out the following year after they had the WrestleMania match. And in um, the following year at No Way Out, The Rock was the heel and Hogan was the face. Um, <clears throat> and it seems like The Rock does a real good job, um, more so as a heel than a face, in my opinion. But The Rock versus Hulk Hogan is one of the greatest rivalries of all time. Definitely a top 10 for me. Uh, the, I think I have The Rock versus Mankind twice. Uh, JDL versus The Big Show. Oof. I mean, they've got some brutal moments between each other. I believe they have a barbed wire cage match. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go on the Peacock. I believe it's on there. Rey Mysterio versus JDL. JDL versus John Cena. This is where John Cena um, becomes a, a huge player and star in the years to come. Brock Lesnar versus John Cena. Um, during any rivalry they've had during the time in WWE, even when John Cena was just beginning, he had a match with Brock Lesnar in a backlash 2003, I believe it was. And um, I don't think it was back when it's 2002, but maybe it is. I want to say it's 2003. But uh, you really see that John Cena is really coming up as an athlete, right? He really takes Brock Lesnar to the limit. Um, it's different seeing that young John Cena do so well against. Uh, a more experienced Brock Lesnar at that point. And I want to say this is actually in Massachusetts too, that match. But definitely, if you get a chance, go watch the JBL John Cena a rivalry during that time. But even uh, past that, over, it seems like maybe 2010, 2012, maybe it was, people were getting tired of seeing Cena and Brock Lesnar came back and um, just absolutely decimated them in a squash match. So anybody, anytime they've been in the ring together, they put they put on a freaking show. Although during that one match it didn't last very long, that's because of Brock Lesnar and Brock Lesnar's coming to whip your ass. He's not coming to wrestle; he's coming to whip your ass. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. Um, they've had uh, several matches over the years. Seeing two big dudes. Being able to throw each other uh, around the way that they do is pretty incredible. And um, and the the Undertaker, as long as he went, he was still able to go. And um, wrestled for, what thirty years or something like that. And I did not like seeing Brock Lesnar in the streak. I did not want to see anybody break the streak. Uh, I th honestly thought. If anybody should have brought the broke the streak, it should have been Bray Wyatt. Um, may he rest in peace. I really miss Bray Wyatt, and I want to move on to the next rivalry now. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Triple H. Um, seems like they only have really one time in WWE history where they really had uh, any sort of rivalry, and that was when Triple H was sort of in the. Um, I don't think he was, was he in authority? It seemed like they had a, um, 
a match when Triple H was the authority member, but they also had a match when Triple H wasn't. I may have to go back and watch more of that, but I remember when Triple H, when he had a, you know, more clean shave and then he didn't have long hair and he was in a nurse with Brock Lesnar. And I remember it being really good. Um, Brock Lesnar versus the Big Show. Um, oh my goodness. They, seeing those, those two behemoths wrestle is like watching two apes trying to fight. <laughs> I say it that way because it really is. I mean, Brock Lesnar is a big dude, but the big show, seeing him get F5 uh, by Brock Lesnar multiple times, uh, it's, pretty, it's just pretty incredible. Brock Lesnar is just a freak athlete. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle. Uh, even though it is painful to watch uh, Brock Lesnar do the uh, moonsault on Kurt Angle because he... Um, he lands on his head. He doesn't actually do it on Kurt Angle. He doesn't land on him. He lands on the mat with his freaking head. Uh, a little scary to watch, I'll be honest. But it's a great rivalry that they have. Uh, John Cena versus Randy Orton. Of all the matches they've had, they have proved why they are two of the toughest and two of the best in WWE history. Their uh, matches that they've had in just over the years as a rivalry in, in general. It's kind of, it's kind of read why I put this on here, not just uh, for any one specific time that John Cena was facing Randy Orton, but their rivalry as a whole is um, pretty incredible. John Cena versus Shawn Michaels. I was so, so pissed off seeing Shawn Michaels uh, lose to um, John Cena at WrestleMania 23. I was pissed off when I saw John Cena lose, when I saw um, Triple H lose to John Cena. So I don't think I included that one on here, but it definitely belongs on here. Um, John Cena versus Triple H. That's one of my absolute favorite rivalries of all time. Um, they showed like the uh, Prohibition era gangsters. Uh, video package and uh, entrance for Cena and then with the uh, guys coming out on the car. Uh, it, it even shows um, in later years that CM Punk was one of the guys on the, on one of the cars coming out during uh, that entrance for John Cena, which I think is really neat. Um, but um, that was one of my favorite entrances, even though I didn't like John Cena. I was like, that was a cool freaking entrance. I wouldn't even like to have an entrance like that. And uh, seeing Triple H's entrance was pretty badass. Um, I really like the uh, Conan kind of throwback to the, to the movie Conan. Uh, Rob Van Dam versus John Cena. Uh, holy crap, what can I say about this match and the rivalry that they had? Uh, I love seeing John Cena lose. There was, I don't think there's a more gratifying or satisfying moment than seeing John Cena lose that championship to Rob Van Dam. Nobody deserved it more than Rob Van Dam. Not a freaking person deserved it more than Rob Van Dam. And seeing him win that championship from John Cena was one of the best moments in WWE history. It definitely makes my top 10 uh, just because, you know, Rob Van Dam came up from WWE. From ECW, and uh, he sh he showed that he could do it all on more than one platform. I did it ECW, and I did it here. I can do it. I can be that main event guy. You can't tell me anymore that I'm not that main event guy because I am that main event guy, Mister Monday Night. Um, Seth Rollins versus Sting. Oh man, I love it. They had it was so cool. Uh, they didn't have any moment that I didn't. Like the entire the entire rivalry from start to finish was incredible. Um, there are moments on Raw with um, it's kind of hard to explain when Sting is in like the, they're showing off the statue 
and they're opening up like the box and all that. It, I don't know. It's difficult to, for me to explain in, in a podcast. You have to watch it. Um, so that's definitely one I would definitely uh, want my viewers and listeners to uh, pay attention to is Seth Rollins versus Sting. In the last, this is 2024, in the last 20 years, that has been one of the absolute best rivalries that WWE has showcased. It's uh, in the last 20 years, it has been top 10 right. Seth Rollins versus John Cena. Man, I love John Cena. Uh, getting his butt whooped by Seth Rollins. Yeah, no fifty four. Um, I've never been a John Cena fan except for when he was in his doctor fucking on stage. I really liked him then. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sting versus Triple H. Seeing um Sting uh debut, I didn't really care for the way they did his Titantron. Um, not only did it take too damn long, it didn't, I didn't really care for the interest me either. Like, it just kind of bugged me. There was a lot of things about his WWE bugging bugged me. But nothing bugged me more than Triple H beating Sting at WrestleMania. Like, what the hell? He returned for what? What was the point of that? But seeing uh, the NWO come out and uh, DX come out uh, to help the both of them, that was uh, that was really cool. That was a special moment. Uh, Chris Benoit versus Chris Jericho. Uh, and you can't get a better rivalry than that. So, so fierce. I remember the both of them having a Ladder match. It was, I think, it was the Intercontinental Championship. One of the best Intercontinental Championship matches to watch. Um, I might even have to watch that here a little bit. Um, but this that is one of the best rivalries that WWE showcased. It. They they also um had a rivalry in WCW. Um, again, two people that transcended the sport. Edge versus Matt Hardy. Um, that was really personal. Like, uh, all all the things involved in that. Just, I mean, mainly just the Lita and what she did. I'm not going to make her look like a bad person in this podcast, but when you cheat on somebody, you cheat on somebody. It doesn't make look, anybody look good. But um, for them to capitalize on that and make a rivalry out of it, I I would have done it. Like if you have some if you have some issues, work it out in the ring. Work it out in your rivalry. Use your use, use your creativeness and put it to good use. You make a positive out of the moment. And um, I hope they did that for um, they were able to do that for for themselves by. Putting on this rivalry because it's one of the best rivalries of all time. It's not just one of the best rivalries WWE. It, I mean, it's one of those rivalries that stands the test of time. Like we got to see two guys that were legitimately hate, freaking hated each other and wanted to freaking kill each other. And the, the matches they put on were, were pretty, pretty freaking crazy. <laughs> Edge versus The Undertaker. Um, I specifically remember a moment in a Hell in a Cell match that uh, really fascinated me with uh, The Undertaker and the fire. Like the Edge being choke slammed uh, through the mat. I was like, holy crap, did that really happen? Uh, but they also had a, uh, other matches, championship matches, uh, pay-per-view matches. Uh, then I definitely need to go back and watch more of. 
stuff like that. They put on classics. They put on wrestling clinics. Like Edge shows why he was one one of the best um, professional wrestlers in the history of the business and one of the best champions in the business um, in his matches with The Undertaker. I think The Undertaker brought out the best in Edge. Chris Jericho versus The Rock. Of course, this also go, goes into Chris Jericho versus Stone Cold, so we're talking about both of them at the same time. Chris Jericho and The Rock could spit on the mic. Both of them were fire on the mic. Um, that's why their rivalry was so good. That's also why Chris Jericho and Stone Cold were so good, because both of them were fire on the mic. And all three of them were incredible in the ring. There's only one thing, though. Chris Jericho was the first person to beat the both of them in one night and be the first ever undisputed WWE champion. And he'll brag about it to this day. And that, that, my friends, is all of the, the rivalries in WWE that I came up with. And there's literally like a hundred of them, but um, I tried to uh, eliminate a few of them uh, during this podcast. Um, let's see here. I'll try and come up with a top ten real quick before I end this podcast and start another podcast. Uh, I would have to say that Stone Cold and Steve Austin versus McMahon, that's one. Uh, Owen Hart versus Bret Hart, that's two. Uh, Stone Cold versus The Rock, that's three. Chris Benoit versus uh, Triple H, that's four. Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon, that's five. Shawn Michaels versus Triple H, that's six. Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker, that's seven. So I got three more. I'd say Rick Rude versus The Ultimate Warrior. Sergeant Slaughter versus Hulk Hogan. And um, Mankind versus The Undertaker would have to be uh, the top 10 rivalries in WWE. I would have to go back and listen to myself to hear what I just, to hear what I just said. But uh, that would have to be uh, a top 10. Definitely somebody else's top 10 if it's not mine. But those are um, some of the best rivalries you can watch. And then they, you can watch it all on Peacock, too. Um, so if you don't have a Peacock, it's about 10 bucks a month without ads. It's not that freaking expensive. But it's going to get expensive because they're going to have a deal with Netflix. And it's going to be like 25 bucks a month. And I'm not ready for that. <laughs> so uh, if you're listening live or if you're about to listen on YouTube or on Facebook, I really appreciate you. Thanks a lot. I'll be looking forward to the next podcast.